Hello Geometry. This lesson is titled Lines in the Coordinate Plane. Well, first we have to go over the equations of a line. Now there are three equations of a line that are used, and so we're going to go over each one. The first one you see is y equals mx plus b. The name of this, uh, this equation is the slope-intercept form. Um, m is your slope. Okay. M stands for your slope, and B is your y-intercept. Oh, some bad handwriting. Is your y-intercept, and that's why it's called the slope-intercept form. Okay, because we know the slope M, and we know the y-intercept B. Now, this is the, the most common one we use when it comes to graphing a line, um, which we're going to do eventually. But let's talk about the other two as well. I'm going to erase this to make some room. Now the second one that uh, we're going to go over is called point slope. And the point slope form, or sorry, the point slope equation is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Now in this case, again, um, why it's called point slope is because we know the slope and we know the point x1, y1. So if you know a point on your line and the slope, we put, plug it into point slope. All right, and the last, and the third and last one is standard form. In standard form is ax plus by equals c. And this is when x and y are both on the same side um, of the equal sign, and the number without x or y is going to be on the opposite side of the equal sign. Now, just two quick things about standard form is that a has to be positive, so a has to be greater than zero. And, and also with standard form, some people teach us slightly differently, but I like to go with the fact, um, I like to go with no fractions in the final answer. So, um, when it's in standard form, there should be no fractions. So A, again, has to be positive or greater than zero, and there's no fractions in it. So these are the three uh, equations of a line that we're going to be using. Um, but we're going to focus mainly um, on slope-intercept. So, uh, but first, let's talk about how do you find slope? How do you find the slope between two points? Well, if I have two points here, I have x1, y1 down at the bottom. I have x2, y2 at the top. Now, what slope is, uh, a way to look at slope is your change in y, the y values, over the change in x values. Or a lot of people, um, just to give a, a, another different words to use to kind of somewhat give you a visual, would be rise over run. So again, you rise up and down, you run left and right. So again, change in y over the change in x, or rise over run. So, the way we come up with the formula for the slope is, again, we're going to do exactly uh, what this portion is saying, change in y over the change in x. So the way you do that is you take one of the y values, so look, we're going to start with y2, and you subtract the other y value. Okay, so y2 minus y1 over the change in x values. So that'd be x2 minus x1. And that is our formula for the slope. So if you're just looking for slope, we're going to look for the change in y over the change in x, or rise over run. And the formula is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now I do want to point out that uh, it didn't matter which y value you started out with, as long as you're careful to start out with that same x value on bottom. So we could have said y1 minus y2, but if we started with y1 on top, we have to start with x1 on bottom. Okay. So again, um, it doesn't matter which y you start with, as long as you understand that the y you start with on top, that matching, matching x value needs to be the one you start with on bottom. Okay, so let's actually find the slope uh, between the following points. Okay, so again here, we have 2, 7, and negative uh, 1, 3. And you have to remember which one's which. This is 
an x value, this is a y value. Okay, a lot of times people uh, will put them, um, <laughs> we'll do x1, x2 in the same parentheses, but that's not true. Um, so we pick a y value, let's go with 7. We subtract the other y value over, since we started with 7 on top, we have to start with 2 on bottom, minus the other x value, which is negative 1. And now we're just going to simplify from here. 7 minus 3 is 4, and 2 minus negative 1, don't forget that becomes a plus, we get 3. So our slope here would be 4 thirds. In our next one, again, I'll start with the other side, um, just to show you. Um, that it doesn't matter which one you start with. We get negative 7, that's one y value, minus the other, which is 1, over, and again, since we started with negative 7 on the, on the top, we have to start with negative 3 on the bottom, minus a negative 4. So that would give us negative 8 over, and that becomes a plus 1, which, if you can reduce, always reduce. So we have a slope of negative 8. Now, let's just go through the proof to show that it doesn't matter which one you start with. If I started with 1, I would do minus negative 7 over, and since I started with 1, I have to start with the negative 4 on bottom, minus negative 3. Again, the two negatives become a plus, so that gives us 8 over negative 1, which, again, when you reduce that, still gives you negative 8 as your slope. Okay, so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now we get to graphing. Now notice here this is in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So therefore, 3 fourths would be our slope, 2 is going to be our y intercept or where it crosses the y axis. Okay, so when it's in slope intercept form, you always want to plot your y-intercept first. Always plot your y-intercept first. In this case, it's plus 2. That means you're going to go up 2. Use a different color here. You're going to go up 2 and make a point. Now, from there, you're going to apply your slope. So that's what we're going to do second. So again, it's rise over run. So we're going to rise 3, 1, 2, 3 and run positive one two three four and all you need is two points to create a line so there you go again a positive slope is going to go up and to the right a negative slope is going to go down and to the right okay so again plot your y-intercept first and then from your y-intercept you're going to plot your slope now on this problem, it's not actually set up nicely for us to graph. So what you have to do is we want to get this into slope intercept form. So the way we do that is we have to get y by itself. So we have to do some algebra here first. So we want to move the 4x over first because we, again, we want to get y by itself. So that leaves us with negative 2y. Now you can't combine the 9 and the 4x because, again, the 4 has the x attached to it and the 9 does not, so they're not like terms. Now, I personally like putting the x's up front, so it stays in that format of y equals mx plus b. And lastly, we're going to divide by negative 2. Divide everything by negative 2. Now our equation reads y is equal to negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a positive 2. 9 divided by negative 2, if you want to write it as a decimal, that'd be negative 4.5, okay? Y equals mx plus b. Again, now we know that this is our slope. This is our y-intercept. Let's go ahead now and graph this equation. Well, again, like I said, you always graph the y-intercept first. So in this case, it says negative 4.5. So you're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half, okay? So it's not always going to line up all nicely on a specific whole number. But if it doesn't, we still have to factor in where would that be. So minus 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half is your y-intercept. 
and from there we apply our slope. And again, our slope in this case is 2 over 1. Don't forget about that invisible 1. So we're going to rise 2 and run 1 from the y-intercept. So up one full amount, puts us halfway there, two full amounts, and then from this location we're going to go over 1. Okay, so that is where our coordinate would be. We go up 2, so it's in between, again, the two marks, over 1. So now we connect the dots, and there goes our line right there. Okay? Okay, now... Um, we're going to actually graph this in a different way, this next one. It says graph 6x plus 3y equals 12, 12 using the intercepts. So there's x-intercepts and there's y-intercepts. Now, the, way, the best way I can explain this is if you're looking for the x-intercepts, then plug a 0 in for y. So to find the x-intercepts, plug a 0 in for y. Now, when we do that, we end up, we'll go gray here. We have 6x plus 3 times 0 is equal to 12. And again, anything times 0 is just 0. So that leaves us with 6x is equal to 12. Therefore, we divide by 6 on both sides. We get x is equal to 2. That's how we find our x-intercept. So when it's a coordinate, so notice our x is 2 when we plugged in a 0 for y. So that's our coordinate, 2, 0. Now, to find your y-intercept, you do the opposite. You would plug a 0 in for x. Okay? So, what would that look like? That's 6 times 0 plus 3y is equal to 12, which, again, anything times 0 is 0. So, that leaves us with 3y is equal to 12. Therefore, divide 3 on both sides, you get y is equal to 4. And to write this as a coordinate, notice we plugged in a 0 in for x, and we end up with y uh, being 4. Okay, so there goes our two intercepts uh, that we can use to graph this line. So, x-intercept is 2, 0, so over 2, 0. And your y-intercept is 0, 4, so up 1, 2, 3. It's not very good intervals here. 1, 2, 3. 3, 4. And now you have your two points to graph this line. Alright, so again, to find your x-intercepts, plug a 0 in for y. To find your y-intercepts, plug a 0 in for x. And those will give you your intercepts. Alright, let's move on. This problem here says write an equation of the line through point A, which is negative 2, 3, and B, which is 1, negative 1. Now a problem like this, what you want to figure out is what information do you have? On this problem, notice all we have are two points. Okay, we have two points. So there is no equation of a line in which it's just two points and that's it. Um, so what we can find with two points is slope. So again, slope is our one y value, so in this case negative one, minus the other y value, which is three, over our x value, 1 minus our other x value, which is negative 2. So that gives us negative 4 on top. That becomes a plus, which is a 3. So our slope is negative 4 thirds. Okay, now, again, what do we have now? We have our slope. Sorry, that's not good. We have our slope. Now notice we have a point and a slope. So what we have to plug this in uh, is into the point-slope formula. And our point-slope formula is y minus y1 is equal to our slope, m, times x minus x1. So that's where we're going to plug these values in. Now the thing about this is it doesn't matter which coordinate, a or b, or you want that you want to use. You can choose either one. So we're going to go with a that as our point, and we already know our slope. So let's plug in. So we have y minus, oh, not equals, y minus our y value, which is 3 from our coordinate, is equal to our slope times x minus our x coordinate, which in this case is negative 2, okay? Um, but minus a negative means plus, okay? When we subtract a negative, 
that actually means plus. So here we have uh, our point slope form, but we're, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put this into slope intercept. So the way we do that now is we have to get y by itself. So what we do, we add the 3 over, we get negative 4 thirds, uh, parentheses x plus 2, but then plus 3. But again, on slope intercept form, there are no parentheses, so we have to go ahead and distribute these uh, our slope. So that gives us y is equal to negative 4 thirds x minus 4 thirds times 2 would be 8 thirds plus 3. Now from here, we have to be able to combine like terms, but this 3 right here does not have the same denominator as the others. So we need to find a common denominator. In this case, the common denominator would be a 3. So the question is, how do you rewrite 3, which invisible one, in terms of thirds? So what we're trying to figure out is what would go here. Well, how do you get from 1 to 3 by multiplying? Is you multiply by 3, which means you have to do the same thing on top, which gives us 9 thirds. So therefore, we can go ahead and replace that 3 with 9 thirds. So lastly, our final answer is y is equal to negative 4 thirds x, and we have negative 8 thirds plus 9 thirds. So that would give us a positive 1 third. And that would be our final answer if we're trying to find the equation of a line, and we decided to put it into slope-intercept form. All right, for our last problem here, it says write the equations for the horizontal line in the vertical line that contains point P which is 3, 2. Now the thing is, if you notice for a vertical line, so this one right here, this vertical line, um, if you were to find coordinates on this line, let's say this point right here, that coordinate is over 3, up 1. Now this coordinate right here that was given is over 3, up 2. If we do one more, this coordinate right here is over 3, up 3. So notice um, on all of these, no matter what your y value is, you have the same exact x value. Um, if it's a vertical line, your equation is solely going to be x equals. Okay, so in this case, the vertical line, the equation of it is going to be x equals 3. There's actually no y value involved because it doesn't matter what you plug in. Uh, you can't even plug in for y. It's just saying um, every time x is 3, there's going to be a coordinate. So therefore, that would be the equation of the line. Now, in like manner, if you flip it around and talk about horizontal, okay, horizontal line, uh, the opposite occurs in this case. Again, so if we were to look, let's take a look at this line going horizontally. And let's just look at it, what happens on a few coordinates. The one we're given right there is 3, 2. If I were to pick another one, let's say right here, that coordinate is over 1, up 2. And even if I were to go all the way back over here, that is negative 1, up 2. And notice all of your y values are the same. In this case, your slope is going to be 0. Um, so a horizontal line is y equals the y value that it's crossing through. Okay, So it's crossing through the y value of 2. The key thing to know about this, and I guess I should have stated this before, is for a vertical line, your slope is what we call undefined. Oh, let me just type that out. Um, here we go. Here we go. Vertical line, um, for a vertical line, your slope, M, is undefined. Because if you were to do all the work out, you would end up um, with zero in your denominator. So if you... Uh, do the work to find your slope and you end up with zero in the denominator, your answer is not zero, it's undefined. And that would show you that it's a vertical line. And for a horizontal line, you'll end up with zero over a number if you use the slope formula. And uh, therefore, zero divided by any number is going to give you zero. So therefore, uh, that would show you that it's a horizontal line if your slope is zero. Okay? So I hope that helps. And good luck with that.